Hi there and welcome. I'm Mary, librarian of the Claremont Branch Library, and I hope that you had a good weekend and your Monday is starting off well. Mondays are the days for poetry, so I hope you're looking forward to our poetry reading for today. Today is all about poems that have a certain rhythm or rhyme scheme to them, so uh, just a variety of poems, but they all have some sort of rhythm and rhyme. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to start with a very short poem called I Meant to Do My Work Today by Richard LaGuelline. I meant to do my work today, but a brown bird sang in the apple tree, and a butterfly flitted across the field, and all the leaves were calling me. And the wind went sighing over the land, tossing the grasses to and fro, and a rainbow held out its shining hand. So what could I do but laugh and go? Next one I have is The Light of Stars by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. The night is come, but not too soon, and sinking silently, all silently, the little moon drops down behind the sky. There is no light in earth or heaven, but the cold light of stars, and the first watch of night is given to the red planet Mars. Is it the tender star of love, the star of love and dreams? Oh no, from that blue tent above, a hero's armor gleams. And earnest thoughts within me rise, when I behold afar, suspended in the evening skies, the shield of that red star. O star of strength, I see thee stand, and smile upon my pain. Thou beckonest with thy mailed hand, and I am strong again. Within my breast there is no light, but the cold light of stars. I give the first watch of the night to the red planet Mars. The star of unconquered will, he rises in my breast, serene and resolute and still, and calm and self-possessed. And thou, too, whosoe'er thou art, that readest this brief psalm, as one by one th thy hopes depart, be resolute and calm. O oh, fear not in a world like this, and thou shalt know ere long, know how sublime a thing it is to suffer and be strong. And this is Light Shining Out of Darkness by William Cowper. God moves in a mysterious way, his wonders to perform. He plants his footsteps in the sea and rides upon the storm. Deep in unfathomable minds of never failing skill, he treasures up his brightest designs and works his sovereign will. Ye fearful saints, Fresh courage take, the clouds ye so much dread, are big with mercy, and shall break in blessings on your head. Judge not the Lord by feeble sense, but trust him for his grace. Behind a frowning providence, he hides a smiling face. His purposes will ripen fast, unfolding every hour. The bud may have a bitter taste, but sweet will be the flower. Blind unbelief is sure to err, and scan his work in vain. God is his own interpreter, and he will make it plain. Now a poem by Thomas Campion called Now Winter Nights Enlarge. Now winter nights enlarge the number of their hours, and clouds their storms discharge upon the airy towers. Let now the chimneys blaze, and cups o'erflow with wine. Let well-tuned words amaze with harmony divine. Now yellow waxen lights shall wait on honey love, while youthful revels, masks, and courtly sights sleep's laden spells remove. This time doth well dispense with lovers' long discourse. Much speech hath some defense, though beauty no remorse. All do not all things well, some measures comely tread, some knotted riddles tell, some poems smoothly read. The summer hath his joys, and winter his delights, though love and all his pleasures are but toys, they shorten tedious nights. And this poem next is called Spring, the Sweet Spring, and it's written by Thomas Nash. 
Spring, the sweet spring, is the year's pleasant king. Then blooms each thing, then maids dance in a ring. Cold doth not sting, the pretty birds do sing. Cuckoo, jug jug, whoa, to wit a woo. The palm and may make country houses gay. Lambs frisk and play, the shepherds pipe all day. And we hear I birds tune this merry lay. Cuckoo, jug jug, whoa, to wit a woo. The fields breathe sweet, the daisies kiss our feet. Young lovers meet, old wives a sunning sit. In every street these tunes our ears do greet. Cuckoo, jug jug, hue, to wit woo. Spring, the sweet spring. And this next poem is by Ben Johnson, and it is called A Fit of Rhyme Against Rhyme. Rhyme, the rack of finest wits, that expresseth but by fits true conceit, spoiling senses of their treasure, cozening judgment with a measure but false weight, resting words from their true calling, propping verse for fear of falling to the ground, jointing syllables, drowning letters, fastening vowels as with fetters they were bound. Soon as lazy thou wert known, all good poetry hence has flown, and art banished. For a thousand years together, all Parnassus green did wither, and wit vanished. Pegasus did fly away, and the wells no muse did stay, but bewailed so to see the fountain dry, and Apollo's music die, all light failed. Starveling rhymes did fill the stage, not a poet in an age worth crowning. Not a work deserving bays, nor a line deserving praise, Pallas frowning. Greek was free from rhyme's infection, happy Greek by this protection was not spoiled. Whilst the Latin queen of tongues is not yet free from rhyme's wrongs, but rests foiled. Scarce the hill again doth flourish, scarce the world with a wit doth nourish, to restore Phoebus to his crown again and the muses to their brain, as before. Vulgar languages that want words and sweetness, and be scant of true measure, a tyrant rhyme hath so abused, that they long since have refused other censure. He that first invented thee, may his joints tormented be, cramped forever. Still may syllables jar with time, still may reason war with rhyme, resting never. May his sense, when it would meet the cold tumor in his feet, grow unsounder, and his title be long fool, that in rearing such a school was the founder. And this poem is simply called A Song, and it is by Thomas Carew. Ask me no more where Jove bestows, when June is past the fading rose. In your beauty's orient deep, these flowers as in their causes sleep. Ask me no more whither doth stray the golden atoms of the day. For in pure love heaven did prepare those powders to enrich your hair. Ask me no more whither doth haste the nightingale when May is past. For in your sweet dividing throat she winters and keeps warm her note. Ask me no more where those stars light that downwards fall in dead of night. For in your eyes they sit, and there fix it become as in their sphere. Ask me no more if east or west the phoenix builds her spicy nest. For unto you at last she flies, and in your fragrant bosom dies. Moving on to a few more that I have in a different book here. Uh, this next poem is on the shorter side called Pied Beauty by Gerard Manley Hopkins. Glory be to God for dappled things, for skies of couple color as the brindled cow, for rose moles all in stipple upon trout that swim, fresh fire coal chestnut falls, finches' wings, landscape plotted and pieced, fold, fallow, and plow, and all trades their gear and tackle and trim, all things counter, original, spare, strange, whatever is fickle, freckled, who knows how? 
with swift, slow, sweet, sour, a dazzle, dim. He fathers forth whose beauty is past change. Praise him. And this is called Break, Break, Break by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Break, break, break on thy cold gray stones, O sea, and I would that my tongue could utter the thoughts that arise in me. O oh, well for the fisherman's boy that he shouts with his sister at play. O oh, well for the sailor lad that he sings in his boat on the bay. And the stately ships go on to their haven under the hill, but oh for the touch of a vanished hand and the sound of a voice that is still. Break, break, break at the foot of thy crags, O sea, but the tender grace of a day that is dead will never come back to me. Poem by John Donne called The Rising Sun. Busy old fool, unruly sun, why dost thou thus, through windows and through curtains, call on us? Must to thy motions lover's seasons run? Saucy, pedantic wretch, go chide late schoolboys and sour apprentices. Go tell court huntsmen that the king will ride. Call country ants to harvest offices. Love all alike, no season knows, nor clime, nor days, hours, months, which are the rags of time. Thy beams so reverend and strong, why should thou think? I could eclipse and cloud them with a wink, but that I would lose her sight so long. If her eyes have not blinded thine, look, and tomorrow late, tell me, whether both the Indias of spice and mine be where thou leftest them, or lie here with me. Ask for those kings whom thou sawest yesterday, and thou shalt hear all here in one bed lay. She is all states, and all princes I, nothing else is. Princes do but play us, compared to this, all honors mimic, all wealth alchemy. Thou, son, art half as happy as we, in that the world's contracted thus, Thine age asks ease, and since thy duties be to warm the world, that's done in warming us. Shine here to us, and thou art everywhere. This bed thy center is, these walls thy sphere. And moving on to another poem I have here, is also by John Donne, and again simply called Song. Go and catch a falling star, get with child a mandrake root. Tell me where all past years are, or who cleft the devil's foot. Teach me to hear mermaids singing, or keep off envy's stinging, and find what wind serves to advance an honest mind. If thou beest born in s to strange stites, things invisible to see, ride ten thousand days and nights, till age snow-white hairs on thee. Thou, when thou returnest, wilt tell me all strange wonders that befell thee, and swear nowhere lives a woman true and fair. If thou findest one, let me know, such a pilgrimage were sweet. Yet do not, I would not go, though at the next door we might meet. Though she were true when you met her, and last till you write your letter, Yet she will be false ere I come to two or three. And this is a poem by Andrew Marvel called On a Drop of Dew. See how the orient dew shed from the bosom of the morn into the blowing roses, yet careless of its mansion new for the clear region where it was born, round in itself encloses and in its little globe's extent, frames as it can its native element. How it the purple flower does slight, scarce touching where it lies, but gazing back upon the skies, shines with a mournful light like its own tear, because so long divided from the sphere. Restless it rolls and in unsecure, trembling lest it grow impure till the warm sun pity its pain 
and to the skies exhale it back again. So the soul, that drop, that ray, of the clear fountain of eternal day, could it within the human flower be seen, remembering still its former height, shuns the sweet leaves and blossoms green, and, recollecting its own light, does in its pure and circling thoughts express the greater heaven in a heaven less. In how coy a figure wound, every way it turns away, so the world, excluding round, yet receiving in the day. Dark beneath, but bright above, here disdaining, there in love. How loose and easy hence to go, how girt and ready to ascend. But moving on a point below, it all about does upwards bend. Such did the manna's sca sacred dew distill, white and entire, though congealed and chill. Congealed on earth, but does, dissolving run, into the glories of the Almighty Sun. And I have just a few more poems for you today. And this next one is called Wild Common, and it's by D.H. Lawrence. The quick sparks on the gorse bushes are leaping, little jets of sunlight texture imitating flame. Above them, exultant, the peewits are sweeping. They have triumphed o'er the ages again, their screamings proclaim. Rabbits, handfuls of brown earth, lie, low-rounded on the mournful turf they have bitten down to the quick. Are they asleep? Are they living? Now see, when I lift my arms, the hill bursts and heaves under their spurting kick. The common flaunts bravely, but below, from the rushes, Crowds of glittering king cups surge to challenge the blossoming bushes. There the lazy streamlet pushes his bent course mildly. Here he wakes again, leaps, laughs, and gushes into a deep pond, an old sheep dip. Dark, overgrown with willows, cool, with the brook ebbing through so slow. Naked on the steep, soft lip. On the surf, I stand watching my own white shadow quivering to and fro. What if the gorse flowers shriveled and I were gone? What if the waters ceased? Where were the marigolds then, and the gudgeon? What is this thing that I look down upon? White on the water wimples my shadow, strains like a dog on a string to run on. How it looks back like a white dog to its master, I on the bank all substance, my shadow, all shadow, looking up to me, looking back. And the water runs, and runs faster, runs faster. And the white dog dances and quivers, and I am holding his cord quite slack. But how splendid it is to be substance here. My shadow, it is neither here nor there. But I, I am royally here. I am here, I am here, screams the peewit. The mayblobs burst out in a laugh as they hear. Here, flick the rabbits, here, pants the gorse, here, say the insects, far and near. Over my skin, in the sunshine, the warm, clinging air, flushed with the songs of seven larks, singing at once, goes kissing me glad. You are here, you are here, we have found you. Everywhere we sought your substantial, your touchstone of caresses, you naked lad. Oh, but the water loves me and folds me. Plays with me, sways me, lifts me, and sinks me, murmurs, oh marvelous stuff. No longer shadow, and it holds me, close, and it rolls me, and folds me, touches me, as if it could never touch me enough. Sun, but in substance, yellow water blobs, wings and feathers on the crying, mysterious ages, peewits wheeling, all that is right, all that is good. All that is God takes substance, a rabbit lobs in confirmation. I hear sevenfold lark songs pealing. And my second to last poem is by Gerard Man Manley Hopkins again, and it is called Winter with the Gulf Stream. The boughs, the boughs are bare enough, but earth has never felt the snow. 
Frost-furred our ivies are, and rough. With bills of rhyme the brambles show, The horse leaves crawl on hissing ground, Because the sighing wind is low. But if the rain blasts be unbound, And from dank feathers ring the drops, The clogged brook runs with choking sound, Kneading the mounded mire that stops, His channel under clammy coats, Of foliage fallen in the copse. A simple passage of weak notes Is all the winter bird dare try. The bugle moon by daylight floats, So glassy white about the sky, So like a berg of hyalin In penciled blue so daintily. I never saw her so divine, But through black branches, rarely dressed, In scarves of silky shot and shine, The webbed and the watery west, Where yonder crimson fireball sits, Looks laid for feasting and for rest. I see long reefs of violets In barrel-covered fens so dim. A gold-water pactolus frets Its brindled wharves and yellow brim. The waxen colors weep and run, And slendering to his burning rim, Into the fat blue mist the sun Drops out, and all our day is done. And the last poem is one by John Greenleaf Whittier, and it is called The Pumpkin. O greenly and fair in the lands of the sun, the vines of the gourd and the rich melon run, and the rock and the tree and the cottage enfold, with broad leaves all greenness and blossoms all gold, like that which o'er Nineveh's prophet once grew, while he waited to know that his warning was true, and longed for the storm cloud and listened in vain for the rush of the whirlwind and the red fire rain. On the banks of the zenal, the dark Spanish maiden comes up with the fruit of the tangled vine laden, and the creole of Cuba laughs out to behold, through orange leaves shining the broad spheres of gold. Yet with dearer delight from his home in the north, on the fields of his harvest, the Yankee looks forth, where crook necks are coiling and yellow fruit shines, and the sun of September melts down on his vines. Ah, on Thanksgiving Day, when from east and from west, from north and from south, come the pilgrim and guest, when the gray-haired New Englander sees round his board the old broken links of affection restored, when the care-wearied man seeks his mother once more, and the worn matron smiles where the girl smiled before. What moistens the lip and what brightens the eye? What calls back the past like the rich pumpkin pie? O fruit loved of boyhood, the old days recalling, When wood grapes were purpling and brown nuts were falling, When wild, ugly faces we carved in its skin, Glaring out through the dark with a candle within, When we laughed round the corn heap with hearts all in tune, Our chair a broad pumpkin, our lantern the moon, Telling tales of the fairy who travelled like steam, in a pumpkin-shelled coach, with two rats for her team. Then thanks for the present, none sweeter or better, ere smoked from an oven, or circled a platter. Fair hands never wrought a pastry more fine, brighter eyes never watched o'er its baking than thine. And the prayer which my mouth is too full to express, swells my heart that thy shadow may never be less, than the days of thy lot may be lengthened below, and the fame of thy worth like a pumpkin vine grow, and thy life be as sweet and its sun last sunset sky, gold-tinted and fair as thine own pumpkin pie. And those are the poems I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed some poems that uh, had some rhyme and rhythm to them. Next week I'll be doing poems by authors you might not be as familiar with. I will be focusing on uh, poets who are not American or British, so trying to get a nice variety of poets from different places in the world. So it should be a fun week next week of poetry that will be poems more likely than not that you are unfamiliar with and poets you are unfamiliar with. So I hope you will join me again next Monday for another poetry reading. Until then, I hope that you have a wonderful week and I will look forward to reading poetry with you again next Monday.